Today, we're going to look at what's different between the IELTS and Cambridge exams. This can give you a better idea of which exam is the right one for you. Hello everyone, I'm Anna from EnglishLikeANative.co.uk. Welcome to my series on exam preparation. You've asked for it, so I'm delivering it. If you're new here, please drop a comment below telling me what video lessons you need and then be sure to subscribe for more English lessons. So let's take a closer look at the differences and similarities between the IELTS and Cambridge exams. Firstly, and the most important thing you should know is, the IELTS exam is the same test for all candidates. So you take the exam and IELTS tells you what level you are, whereas, with the Cambridge exams, there are different tests for each level. These levels go from A to key to C to proficiency. So you need to know which level you are before you start to prepare for the exam. Secondly, the IELTS exam expires after two years, so you may need to take the IELTS exam more than once in your life. If you need it for university entry and then a few years later, for a visa requirement, for example. The Cambridge exams don't expire, so they are valid for life. Thirdly, there are two versions of the IELTS exam, general training and academic training. The speaking and listening papers are the same for all candidates, but the writing and reading papers are different for the general and academic versions. The general version concentrates on more everyday types of context and text types. And the academic one is, well, more academic. The number of correct answers you need for different band scores is different for the reading paper too. Take a look on the screen to see what I mean. The one that's best for you depends on why you need the exam. So if you need the exam to get into university, you probably need the academic version. But if you need the exam for a visa requirement, then you'll probably need the general version. Now with the Cambridge exams, there's just one version of each exam for each level. Everyone answers the same kinds of questions with the same kinds of texts. There is one small thing to mention here. Three exams, the A2 key, B1 preliminary, and B2 first have a four schools exam with topics that are appropriate for younger people but the same things are tested. The fourth thing to consider is you can't fail the IELTS exam. You just get a score and that gives you your level. People say they failed the exam, but they mean they didn't get the score they needed. You can fail the Cambridge exams. On the bright side, if you get a grade A, then you get a higher level on your certificate. So if you take the B2 first exam and get more than 180 points, your certificate will say that your level is C1. And this is true for all the exams from A2 key to C1 advanced. The fifth point I want to mention is on the IELTS exam, there is no specific part that tests your grammar, but your grammar is tested. There's just no dedicated section. So if in the listening paper you write a word in the plural like informations, but the answer should be the uncountable information, then it's marked as wrong. You don't get any points for knowing the answer if the grammar doesn't fit the space provided. However, on the Cambridge exam, there is a specific part that tests your knowledge of grammar and vocabulary. On the B2 first, C1 advanced and C2 proficiency, there is a section at the end of the reading paper called use of English. This has exercises designed to test very specific specific language like verb tenses, collocations, idioms, and verb patterns, to name just a few. Now there are four papers on the IELTS exam, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. You take them in that order on the test day. So listening, reading, writing, then speaking. On the Cambridge A2 key exam, there are just three papers, reading and writing together as one, and listening, and speaking. On the B1 preliminary exam and up to C2 proficiency, all exams have four papers, reading, writing, 
listening and speaking. And they are taken in that order except for the speaking. Speaking of the speaking exam for the IELTS, it's just you and the examiner having a conversation in a room. For all the Cambridge exams, there are two candidates and two examiners. One who speaks to you and the other who just listens. Now for both IELTS and Cambridge, the speaking papers can be on the same day as the other papers or up to seven days before or afterwards. There's a difference in the time the examinations take. The IELTS exam is about two hours and 45 minutes in total, while the Cambridge exams can take up to four hours. They start at two hours for the A2 key and each higher level test takes more and more time. And that's a brief outline of the main differences and similarities between the IELTS and Cambridge exams. If you want to know more about test questions in more detail, then look out for more videos in this examination series. I'll leave the useful links in the description below. Remember, when trying to decide which test is best for you, you should think about why you need an official English qualification. If you need the exam to go to a specific university, then check what exams your university accepts. Similarly, if your employer has asked you to take an official exam, then check with them what they will accept. Now, if you're happy to stick with me for a little longer, then why not look at my video, 10 common grammar mistakes, so that you'll know what not to do, whichever exam you decide to take. Until next time, take care and goodbye.